The Promised Key by G. G. Mara, the Right Honorable Leonard Percival Howell. Map name equals box map P8, area shape equals rect CORDS equals 14. This is a Proterastafarian tract by Leonard Howell, a Jamaican preacher. Published around 1935, this is obviously an edited, much shorter, version of the Royal Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy, without the stream of consciousness language, long opaque abbreviations, and repetition. Most significantly, the identities of King Alpha and Queen Omega were transposed from Fitz Ballantyne Petersburg and his wife as in the Royal Parchment Scroll, to Emperor Hale Selassie and Empress Men in a Store. This was one of the key innovations of the Howellites, and is today an article of faith of Rastafarianism. In 1933, Howell started to preach that the Emperor Hale Selassie of Ethiopia, Rastafari, was the Messiah, that black people were the chosen people, and would soon be repatriated to Ethiopia. He soon attracted the attention of the colonial authorities, and was arrested in December 1934 for sedition. In March of 1934 he was sentenced to two years imprisonment, during which he apparently wrote the promised key. After he was released in 1936, he published a newspaper called The People's Voice. In 1954 his commune was raided and much literature, including copies of this book, were burned. Howell was found dead under suspicious circumstances in February 1981. The Mystery Country I wish to state to you my dear readers, that Ethiopia is a country of great contrasts largely unexplored and is populated by black people, whose attitude towards this so-called Western civilization has not changed within the last 6,000 years. The people are Christians while retaining primitive customs. The result is that the black people of Ethiopia are extraordinarily blended into a refined fashion that cannot be met within any other part of the world. In 1930 the Duke of Gloucester undertook one of the most interesting duties he had been called upon to execute up to this date. The occasion was the coronation of His Majesty Raz Tafari, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords the conquering Lion of Judah, the elect of God and the light of the world. The Duke was to represent his father the Anglo-Saxon King. The Duke handed to His Majesty Rastafari, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords a scepter of solid gold 27 inches long, which had been taken from the hands of Ethiopia some thousand years ago. The Duke fell down on bending knees before His Majesty Rastafari, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords and spoke in a loud voice and said, Master, Master my father has sent me to represent him sir. He is unable to come and he said that he will serve you to the end master. See Psalm 72 verse 9 to 11 verses. Also see General 49 chapter 10 verse. On one side of the scepter was inscribed Ethiopia shall make her hands reach unto God, and on the other side the king of kings of Ethiopia, the top of the shaft was finished with a seal and above was a clen cross, in which a single carbuncle was set. The scepter was a magnificent piece of workmanship, and had been designed from an historic piece, in which the special ceremonies of His Royal Highness of Ethiopia, Earth's rightful ruler. The Duke also handed to Queen Omega the Empress of Ethiopia a scepter of gold and ivory. The shaft is in the form of a spray of lilies, and at the top a spray of lilies in bloom. It was a brilliant ceremony, the church began to be filled. The Ethiopians were brilliant in special robes having discarded their precious white robes and wore jewels of great value. The men's swords were being heavily ornamented with gems. On their heads they wore gold braided hats, in which the covered lion's manes were to be seen. In contraction, then were the solar notes struck by the women who were heavily veiled and wore heavy cloaks. His and Her Majesty King Alpha, and Queen Omega the King of Kings drove to the cathedral in a coach drawn by six white Arab horses. Queen Omega in a robe of silver and the escort on mules wearing lion skin over their shoulders, 
forming into procession outside the cathedral. King Raz Tafari and Queen Omega the royal pair, the escort and a line of bishops and priests entered the guest rank obeisance. King Alpha sitting on his throne homage was done to him by the bishops and priests fulfilling the 21st Psalm. The ceremony took 10 days from the second day to the 11th day of November 1930. King Alpha was presented with the orb spurs and spears and many other mighty emblems of his high office. Dignitaries of the world power presented King Alpha with the wealth of oceans. The emperor attended to most of his preparations for the reception of his thousands of guests himself, and day after day could be seen rushing about in his scarlet car seeing how the white laborers were getting on with the new road he had ordered that the lawns he had laid down be attended to and that the extension of the electric lights throughout the city were being hurried on. Next, the false religion. The false religion. All the church's religious system of today claims to represent the Lord God of Israel, but the Pope who is Satan the devil, false organization, is a hypocritical religious system that has three elements, first commercial political and ecclesiastical, to keep the people in ignorance of their wicked course. Money powers are the great bulwarks of their organization, and they use the religious elements as a smoke screen to keep the people in ignorance of the truth. The false teachers under the supervision of the Pope of Rome who is Satan the devil. The agents of his speaking lies in the churches and let the people walk in darkness. My dear readers you can see that all their foundations of the earth are out of course. Allow me to say that there is no throne for the Anglo-Saxon white people. They must come down and sit in the dust on the ground there is no throne for them. See Isaiah 47th chapter. King Alpha was wroth with us the black people, and had polluted our inheritance for 2,520 years, and had given us into the hands of the Anglo-Saxon white people. They showed us no mercy therefore evil shall come upon them suddenly. Now let the astrologers and stargazers stand up and save the Anglo-Saxon kingdom from the vengeance that shall come upon them suddenly. Next, the prophet. The glory that was Solomon greater still reigns in Ethiopia. We can see all the kings of the earth surrendering their crowns to His Majesty Raz Tafari, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords Earth's rightful ruler to reign forever and ever. Upon His Majesty Raz Tafari's head are many diadems, and on his garments a name written King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, O come let us adore him, for he is King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, the conquering Lion of Judah the elect of God and the light of the world. His Majesty Raz Tafari is the head over all man, for he is the supreme God. His body is the fullness of him that fill it all in all. Now my dear people, let this be our goal. Forward to the King of Kings must be the cry of our social hope. Forward to the King of Kings to purify our social standards and our way of living, and rebuild and inspire our character. Forward to the King of Kings to learn the worth of manhood and womanhood. Forward to the King of Kings to learn his code of laws from the Mount demanding absolute love, purity, honesty, and truthfulness. Forward to the King of Kings to learn his laws and social order, so that virtue will eventually gain the victory over body and soul, and that truth will drive away falsehood and fraud. Members of the King of Kings arise for God's sake and put your armor on. Dear inhabitants of the Western Hemisphere, the King of Kings' warriors can never be defeated, the Pope of Rome and his agents shall not prevail against the King of Kings' host warriors you all must stand up, stand up, for the King of Kings. All ye warriors of the King of Kings lift high King Alpha's royal banner, from victory to victory King Alpha shall lead his army till every enemy is vanquished. Next, Ethiopia's Kingdom Ethiopia's Kingdom. Dear inhabitants of this world, King Raz Tafari and Queen Omega are the foundation stones of the resurrection of the Kingdom of Ethiopia. Their prayer and labor for our resurrection is past finding out, 
No library in this world is able to contain the work of their hands for us, for they work both day and night for our deliverance. As for this generation of the twentieth century, you and I have no knowledge how worlds are built and upon what triggers kingdoms are set. In King Alpha's encyclopedia, he will explain to us all how worlds are being built and upon what trigger kingdoms are set on. He will also explain to us the capacities of generations. Speaking for the universe and the womanhood of man, Queen Omega the Ethiopian woman is the crown woman of this world. She hands us her rule book from the poles of supreme authority, she is the canon mistress of creation. King Alpha and Queen Omega are the paymasters of the world, Bible owner and money mint. Do not forget they are black people if you please. Owing to the universal rend of our ancient and modem, we are at this juncture of our history scattered over the globe into little sectional groups. All our local bands throughout the globe are bent towards King Alpha's royal repository. The royal authority is to admit all bands, mission camps, denominations into the supreme royal repository. Queen Omega being the balming mistress of many worlds, she charges the powerhouse right now. Ethiopia is the succeeding kingdom of the Anglo-Saxon kingdom. A man of greater learning and a better Christian soul, then King Alpha is not to be found on the face of the globe. He makes the nation's heart rejoices with raging joy, we give him the glory. Ethiopia rulebook leads us into different departments of the kingdom, the records of the kingdom are with us unto this day. The regulations points us to the basis of the kingdom. Many will not see the truth, because they are spiritually blind. See Matthew 3 verse 13. The woman of Samaria first refused to obey the request of our Lord, because she was spiritually blind. But when the great physician opened up her eyes, and healed her of her infirmities concerning her many husbands in the city of Samaria, she found out that her first teachers of denominations throughout the state or country of Samaria were false. Then she cried aloud unto the inhabitants of the city, and said Come see a man, that told me all that I ever did, and is not a native of Samaria but in Hebrew, is not this man the very Christ? Our cities of today are inhabited with the same qualities of people as it was in the days of Jesus and the woman of Samaria. Next, the healing 